Hey everyone, it's Michael with Color Cubic, and I'm back again with another quick tip tutorial. So in our last quick tip tutorial, what we discussed was how to create the perfect circle out of the surface of any editable object. But in this quick tip tutorial, what we'll be creating is essentially a, a pill-shaped button nested inside of a switch, like you see here. So in this example, this is just an old iPhone 5S model that I created a couple years back. But I'm employing that technique for the ring vibrate switch on the phone. But if we come over here in this uh, screen grab of an iPhone 7, we can employ this technique not just for the ring vibrate switch, but also for the volume buttons on the side. So this technique definitely has multiple applications, and I'm sure for those of you who utilize it, you'll be able to find other uses for it as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D and get started. So I'm working in R16 as usual, and I do want to apologize though for those of you who followed along with our last quick tip tutorial. Usually I like to preface my videos with, you know, if you're working in an earlier or later version of Cinema 4D, you should be able to follow along verbatim. Unfortunately, that was not the case. So I hope in this instance you are able to follow along. And for those of you who can't, just know that you know, whenever I get a chance, I, I do plan on going back to try to find some kind of workaround for those of you who are working in R14 and earlier, so that hopefully you'll be able to come to the same uh, conclusion and the results will be the same. With that said, uh, you know, just try to follow along as best you can. And uh, yeah, I think I think this will this will turn out well. So right off the bat, we just want to enable a cube onto our scene. So if we come up here to our objects tab, we just need to click this once and that'll enable a cube onto our scene. Next, we want to come over here to display and then we want to come down to garage shading lines. So what this does was this just enables the segments of our object. So right now, because our cube is just six sides, it's, you know, the segments are only six, so one segment per side. So we want to increase the segments of our cube, which we can do if we come over here to our Objects Manager, and with our cube selected, we can come down here to our Object tab, and within the segments, we just need to change these values from 1 to 10 for each segment. And there we go. Now each side has 100 segments. So now that we've done that, Let's come back up here to our Objects Manager, and with our cube selected, let's press the C key on our keyboard to make our object editable. Next, we want to come over here to our Live Selection tool, and then we want to come down here to our Surface Polygons tab. Now, um, if you hold down the Alt Option key on your keyboard, and then click and drag with your mouse, we can position this just so it's a little more um, centered like the surface of this. We can pick any surface we want, we just need a surface. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and zoom in. And we can achieve that by either scrolling with our mouse, or alternatively, you can use this tool up here. So let's get in here, let's get pretty close in. All right, this is good. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna select two of these polygons. So you can just click and drag with your mouse and select these two. Next, what we want to do is we want to hold, um, sorry, we want to right click and come down to extrude. And now click and drag to the left just so the offset value is a negative value. So the surface is, um, is nested. There we go, that looks good. Now let's come back up here to our live selection tool. And then we want to come here to our edge selection tab edge selection. <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a mouthful. All right, so what we want to do next is we just want to select these corners in here. And so once you've selected one, hold down the alt option key on your keyboard and then click and drag with your mouse to rotate around so we can get all of these selections. And now before you get the next selection, hold down the shift key and then select it with your mouse. That way you don't deselect the previous selection. Okay, now I'm just going to rotate down here, hold down the shift key, select this, rotate over, hold down the shift key, and select that one. So now I have all four corners selected. 
So what we're going to do first is we're just going to create the recessed area that a little button like the volume buttons on the side of the iPhone can live in. So this is just an example. It's not, it's not precise, but this definitely gives you the idea of how to achieve that. So what we want to do now with our live selection tool selected, and we're in the edge selection tab, it's a right click and come to bevel. So what we want to do is we just want to decrease the offset value by, let's just say 9.9 .9 centimeters. And then we can just tab out. And for the subdivision, let's make our subdivision 10. There we go. So right away, we're getting this really nice pill shape. And what we need to do next is we need to come back to our live selection tool and then come back to our surface polygons tab. So what we want to do here is we just want to select with our mouse these two, um, these two, uh, these two surfaces. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of that. So let's go ahead and select these two surfaces, these two polygons, and now let's right click and come down to extrude inner. And now what we want to do is we just want to click and drag to the left just so we can extrude this inward. We can just eyeball this. It doesn't need to be perfect, but that looks pretty good. Next, let's right click and come to extrude. And now just click and drag to the right. And that looks pretty good to me. Again, you can just eyeball this. It doesn't need to be perfect. This is just an example. So now let's come back to our live selection tool and then our edge selection tab. Next, let's press the U key on our keyboard and then L for loop. So U as in unicorn and then L as in loop. And what we want to do is we just want to select, we want to make sure that our loop selection is selecting just the circumference of this pill, this, the face of this pill. So it's a little touchy, as you can see here. I just want this. So there we go, that's selected. It might take you a couple tries, so don't get too frustrated. So now that we have this surface selected, I'm gonna right click and come back to bevel. And in here, I just wanna make our offset one centimeter. And subdivisions are fine. That looks good, 10, 10 subdivisions. So now I'm gonna come back to my live selection tool and then just deselect. And now I'm just gonna do a quick RAM preview. So if you're on a Mac, press Command R. If you're on a PC, Control R. So now you can see we get this nice uh, kind of beveled finish on the edge of the surface of this button. So it's not just a hard, you know, 45 degree angle edge, it's, you know, it's got a nice curvature to it so the light can bounce off of it. It looks more apparent. And, you know, I don't have any proper lighting in my scene, so, um, you know, but this will do for example's sake. So yeah, that's, there we go. All you need to do is repeat those steps and um, you can duplicate that pretty, pretty quickly. So, so that works pretty well. Next, let's go ahead and try the switch because this is, it's employing that same technique, but it's a little different because in this case, I'm using two objects. I'm using the surface of the side of the iPhone, and then I'm employing that same technique to another cube that's just smaller and, um, and contorted to fit this, uh, to fit this area. So, Let's go ahead and zoom in here again. And remember, we have our, our editable cube selected in our objects manager. We have our live selection tool. But what we want to do next is we want to come over here to our surface polygons tab. So what we want to do is we just want to select these two polygons right here. There we go. And now let's right click. Let's come to extrude. And now click and drag to the left with your mouse, just so the offset value is a negative value. There we go. And now let's come back up to our live selection tool. And then let's select our edge selection tab. And again, we just want to select these four corners. So let's go ahead and select one, hold down the alt option key on your keyboard and then click and drag with your mouse just so you can rotate the perspective. 
And now before you get the selection, hold down the Shift key and then select it. And now hold down the Alt Option key, click and drag with your mouse to rotate. And now hold down the Shift key and get this, this other selection. And now Alt Option again, click and drag. Hold down the Shift key and grab this last one. Now we have all four corners selected. Now let's right click. Let's come to Bevel. And now this time, our subdivisions are fine. You know, we want it to be 10. But our offset, we can increase this. Let's just increase it to, you know, 5 looks good. That'll work. And so now let's come back to our Live Selection tool. And then let's come to our Surface Polygons tab. And I'm just going to drag it off the scene a little bit just to deselect. There we go. So we're pretty much finished with that. Now what we need to do is we just do, we need to enable another cube onto our scene. So if we just if we just come up here to the the cube and just select it once. And now with our new cube on the scene, let's double click this and let's name this switch. And so in our objects manager with our switch our switch selected, let's come down here to our object tab and I'm just going to decrease the size value of this. So I'd say let's make this mm, let's make this let's make this 7. 7 centimeters that looks good. And I'm just going to drag this up a little bit and over. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect. We just need to eyeball this a little bit. This is just for example's sake. When you're actually doing this, you can you know spend as much time on this as you want. That looks pretty good though. Um, actually, I might reduce it a little bit. All right, so the Y value I just set it to 38, and now the Z value. Let's bring this all the way down. Let's say let's just make it 20 centimeters. Again, this does not need to be perfect, so don't sweat it too much if you're not getting it exactly the way you want it to be. Okay, there we go. Just so it's protruding out a little bit. And so now in our Objects Manager, with our switch selected, let's press the C key on our keyboard just to make this editable. And now with our Live Selection tool selected, let's come down here to our Edge Selection tab. And we just want to grab the four corners of this switch. So very similar to what we did to round out the inside of this uh, this area where the switch lives. So let's just select one edge, hold down the Alt Option key on your keyboard, click and drag to rotate, now hold down the Shift key, make that selection, hold down the Shift key again, get that bottom selection, Alt Option to rotate, hold down the Shift key, and there we go, we have all four corners. So now, let's go ahead and right click, and come down to Bevel, and Let's make this, let's see what one centimeter looks like. Um, we can actually increase that maybe a little bit more. That looks good. Three looks good. It doesn't need to be perfect, but yeah, that'll work for us. So now let's come back to our, um, our live selection tool. And now let's just deselect. And now let's press the U key on our keyboard, so U as in unicorn and then L as in loop. So we just want to grab the surface of this uh, of this switch here. So again, it's a little touchy, so just make sure that the preview is showing that the entire surface of this, the entire circumference of the face of the switch is selected. And then just select it. There we go. And now let's right click, come to bevel, and let's make the offset one centimeter. That looks good. And then the subdivision as 10, that's fine. And now let's come back to our live selection tool, and then let's just deselect. And now let's do a quick RAM preview. So if you're on a Mac, press Command R. If you're on a PC, Control R. And there we go. That's this, this is it. This is the switch. Obviously, this area that it's living in, it's a little bigger than it should be, but that's no problem. I mean, that's something that if you spend more time on this, you can get it to be exactly the way you want it. But um, 
what's nice about this process is that, you know, especially if I'm employing two objects, um, if I, if I go back over here to my model tab with my live selection tool selected, I have control over this. So I can just drag this. So if I ever want to animate that in this instance, that's what I did here is I animated the switch to convey vibrate versus ring. And so that's something you could easily do with this, if you can imagine that. So, but yeah, that's, that's essentially the technique. So, you know, I hope you found that helpful. And, um, you know, again, for those of you who are working in earlier versions of Cinema 4D, if you weren't able to follow along, I apologize. Uh, I'll be sure to go back and try to establish a different process, which hopefully comes up with the same results. Otherwise, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back next time with a new tutorial. So talk to you soon. Bye.